Uh, it is winter now, but it shan't not be that way forever. We are 189 <laughs> days away from the Olympics. And with only 11 Alive giving you exclusive behind the scenes access to our hometown athletes. And <laughs> this young woman right here will be covering all you need to know about what's going on in Tokyo. It's going to be my, a, a uh, great trip, event. My trip itinerary and the plane tickets just arrived this week. Really? So I'm locked in. I'm going. Good. We look forward yeah. to you being there. It's going to be great I'm seeing all the coverage. Yeah. I really am. Yeah. People often think, though, of Olympians as millionaires. You know, their, their face is on the box of Wheaties, and they have all these big-time <laughs> endorsements. But before they can ever get any of those deals, which a, a small fraction of them actually do, right. they have to make it to the competition all at their own expense. Caitlin Ross talked with a group of athletes who are training for the 2020 Games, and they are doing their best to show this country what they've got. They really are. They meet at the Georgia State University track for hours every day. Many try and keep part-time jobs to support themselves, even as they train from morning to night. But none of them are complaining. This chance is what they've always wanted. It's the, literally like this much. Reggie Steele can count his Olympic dream in centimeters. The Olympic trial mark for long jump is eight meters. I'm at 7.87. But his journey can be measured in miles. The long jumper left everything he knew to move to Atlanta and train with the winner's circle. My family's back home, everybody's back home in Maryland. They travel down to see me during the holidays and things like that, but I live here and I'm here. The winner's circle is a team of Olympic hopefuls from all over the world who train together at the Georgia State University track every day. There are sprinters, jumpers, and hurdlers doing everything they can to make the Olympic dream. Being an Olympian is really lived. Like, it's not anything that's like, you can just get up and do. Like, you have to change your whole lifestyle to fit this thing. Every single one of them has a countdown in their head. How long until the Olympic trials? How long until the games? And what they have left to get there. Pushing it to the limit here. We're putting our bodies on the line, making sure we're, you know, blood, sweat, and tears out here, running it hard every single rep. And that's one thing I appreciate about all my teammates is that, Nobody's slacking. While they train together, they have to fundraise the money it takes to compete themselves. Until you're sponsored, everything is out of pocket. Reggie is 27. For a long jumper, that's the athletic prime of their career. So this year, this Olympics, this is it for him. That's it. He started an online fundraiser to try and get the money he needs to compete, to give the Olympics everything he's got. Hard work and dedication. Every rep that I feel like I'm gonna die. Uh, <laughs> I look to my teammates, they give me a high five or give me that look like, come on, man, we gotta get it. The Olympic trials are July 18th, so he'll know then whether or not he qualifies to compete, but he's actually at a competition right now. I've been waiting for him to see if he's gonna text me and tell me he made that eight meter mark. So far, fingers crossed, we don't know yet. <laughs> Oh, I'm cheering for him. I'd love to see him make that next step. Yeah. Caitlin, thanks a lot. You know, it really makes you appreciate more when the athletes reach their goal and get to the Olympics. We're going to be sharing those stories. I'll be at the Summer Games in Tokyo along with Matt Pearl, and that's coming up mid-July. What a great city. Yeah. I was there with the Falcons 20 years ago, an unforgettable place.